Hey everyone, uh, Jerry here from Llama Index and excited to feature a few really awesome hackathon projects that we uh, that were winners of our last Llama Index hackathon. Um, they rate, the theme of the hackathon was basically anything but chatbots. So how can you use RAG to build advanced applications that are beyond the simple Q&A apps that you typically see during hackathon projects? And so we're excited to feature uh, four projects. Um, so ADU Planning, um, Home AI, uh, Nothing, I think that's how I pronounce it, um, and then Counselor Copilot. And so um, we'll present these projects, not in the order that I just mentioned, but you know they'll, they'll be in the YouTube timeline. And then uh, excited to share these projects with you, answer any questions that you have. And they also feature really cool use cases of both Llama Index, the open source framework, as well as some of our recently released features like Llama Parse. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna pass it to uh, Sophie uh, and the rest of the ADU team. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. We're an ADU team. I'm Sophie. Uh, I'm actually a full-time chip designer, uh, but that's okay. And then that's my teammate, Justin. Justin is software engineer. Uh, and then we have another person here. That's Henry. Henry uh, used to also be software engineer. Uh, and then we have a fourth person, although I don't see her. That's Regine. Regine is still a PhD student, uh, but focusing on general AI. Uh, so that's four of us. Uh, and then uh, should we just do a quick demo, Justin and Henry? Uh, so that's our project, ADU Planner. So our product is essentially you enter address and then you can zoom to the address and then you get the satellite image of this uh, lot. And then you go to the satellite image and you start um, analyzing the city building code for this lot for you. Uh, so uh, how do you actually build the uh, the ADUs uh, in the backyard? So this, is, uh, this was uh, live. Uh, analyzing the uh, city building code. And then as you guys can see, they're like minimum side of the real, whatever, like there's some uh, rules you have to follow. Uh, and then after that, uh, this whole thing is analyzed. Uh, oops, uh, Jerry, uh, do you mind just like go back a little bit? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so after this whole thing is analyzed, uh, the city building code will uh, be feeding to like, for example, GPT, and then you also output like a mask to mask on top of your property. Uh, the mask that's red, that means that it's unbuildable. And then I uh, will ask also calculate like a region that's actually buildable in the green box. And then we will render the buildable floor plan on the top of the buildable lots uh, as there you can see. And then by clicking on that a uh, on that uh, floor plan of the ADU and then user will be able to direct it to the uh, ADU vendors uh, to actually initiate um, the, the building process. Yeah. Maybe yeah, um, and just... The... Oh, just to take a quick step back, um, what was the motivation for this project? Because uh, you know, I, I know you're trying to narrate over like a forty second video, but we'd love to hear like the high level context of what uh, motivated you to your team. Okay. To uh, Henry, can you give us a, you know, motivation? So um, this was sort of to um, allow the homeowners to put ADUs in their backyards in California. You can do that now in other states as well. So it was just kind of to streamline the process um, rather than having a vendor call, uh, a person call, um, all sorts of different vendors. And it just kind of makes it easier for a uh, uh, person to build in their backyard an ADU, kind of to solve the whole somewhat, somewhat of the uh, limitations of um, homeless, um, you know, lack of housing in California and others, other areas of the country. What was the stack that, that your team was using? Uh, we were using a React JS front end, and then we had a Flask back end. And within the Flask back end, we were using Llama index for our uh, PDF parsing and uh, to build a like an index over the uh, building codes that, that we were bringing in for that particular location. All right. And Sophie, I know you had a few other things um, that you were going to say. Oh, there are a few other things? Oh, you were just, I thought you were going to uh, continue because I, oh, I no, no, no. Um, Is there anything else that you and your team want to share? Um, do you guys have anything to share? 
Um, yeah, uh, I thought to share that for the uh, image analysis, uh, we uh, we utilized the GPT four way for the uh, for the core uh, pro property poll and some some key po key parts um, recognition. But uh, I, I saw that someone in LinkedIn have some concern that uh, since um, LM could, could hallucinate. Uh, so uh, they have concern that whether we should uh, utilize uh, uh, generative AI to some real um, uh, scenario. And uh, so in our case, uh, I, I'd like to share that even if we uh, adopt a GPT-4 way for the, um, for the uh, property recognition, but for the analysis, for the accurate analysis, we still use uh, use computer vision model to uh, make the uh, accurate uh, prediction. So as you can see for the for the mask, uh, it mask the very accurate. That's not uh, only based on the uh, generative AI. Uh, we uh, so we we utilize a generative AI for recognize uh, where is the what are the core uh, key parts in 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 the layout. And then we uh, connected this uh, data with the uh, outsider uh, computer vision model so that uh, it can mask the, the exact uh, um, area of that. And then based on the uh, combined with the data we, we, we got from the ADU policy based on your address, we make a good combination and analysis and then uh, calculate the uh, calculate the potential uh, available area that you can uh, build a, a ATU in your uh, backyard. And was that last part, was that just uh, heuristics? Was that an algorithm or was that also using a model? Uh, what algorithm? Uh, sorry, what was the question? Oh, just that last piece where you're trying to calculate where to place the, the unit. Um, is that like an algorithm or are you also using a language model? Uh, no, I think uh, we calculate to by uh, by ourselves. We uh, we write that. Not, Got not it. To, yeah, we write a model by ourselves. Makes sense. What's the what was the um? Could you talk through the stack about like how you use GPT four B? Because I think it's very interesting. Um, you put in an image, uh, feed it in through GPT four B, uh, and then mm -hmm. you translate that. You said you you feed the input into a computer vision model that does some sort of like, you know, segmentation or, or detection of, of these like uh, regions where you can't build, right? Um, and, and so could you talk a little bit more about what the, like how you feed in the input like into that model? So the output of GPT-4B is a bunch of text. So how do you translate that into something into, into these um, red boxes right here? Uh, yeah. Uh, so for, first, uh, I try to use uh, GPT uh, for way because what we want is a, a structured output. Like uh, we 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 want to uh, get the uh, uh, coordinating coordinating data of the of the um, of this this part. Uh, sometimes uh, it's surprisingly sometimes GPT four way can give me some uh, some some. Uh, the math, uh, mathematical data, but I try that it's not very accurate. So uh, I change that to only give me a uh, uh, analysis of for, for the for the recognition, and then you uh, you you find you find the key part like for like uh, uh, these are the these are the main parts from the from the layout, uh, because also we found that property pool drive width. Are the three uh, major parts uh, we, we like to take into consideration in the ADU building. So then we uh, we just use uh, GPT four way to find that, and then uh, some computer vision they are trained by a lot of uh, uh, data to for as an example for poll. Uh, the computer vision if you, you tell them uh, find me uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, coordinating uh, axis for for the poll that computer vision can based on their um uh, training data to give you uh to recognize it and output a structured uh, output and then we utilize that uh, 
uh, to connect with a masked uh, uh, computer vision uh, model, uh, 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 computer vision model <clears throat> that can mask that area. Got it. So from the out, uh, structured output, and then connect an uh, uh, image uh, model to give it a mask and show it on the layout. Great. Thanks for sharing the information. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I think that, that rounds out the time pretty nicely. And so with uh, um, we could probably transition to the next project. So thanks for presenting the ADU team and congrats on uh, being a winner of the hackathon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So I, I think the next Thanks. one is uh, Counselor Copilot. Um, are you guys ready? Sure thing. Um, I can share my screen. Yeah, that sounds great. Let me just stop sharing. Okay. All right. Can you guys see our deck? Yeah, this looks great. Awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, Ria, do you want to take the lead here? Sure. Uh, I'm Sarah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ria. Um, I'm from the Counselor Copilot team. Um, you have all of our names down there, Amanda, Devija, me, Sharon, Darun, and Zara. I'm excited to talk to you about our product today. Um, so the motivation for this product um, was our first time first-hand experience as counselors uh, with, the with the Trevor Project. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Trevor Project, the Trevor Project is a nonprofit based in the United States that aims to um, end suicide amongst LGBTQ youth. Um, we serve youth via text, uh, message, and calls. Um, and as a counselor myself, I faced a number of issues uh, when being a Trevor counselor, mostly around the time spent um, kind of searching for resources, Googling for things online, digging through documents in Salesforce, filling out case forms, all while also trying to manage multiple conversations with contacts at once. So um, our, our goal was this with this project was to empower counselors like myself um, to aid youth in crisis. Um, and kind of be able to focus on conversations rather than have to do all of the administrative tasks around um, just starting a conversation, um, wrapping it up, and then creating the documentation afterwards. Um, so our solution has a couple of different parts to it. Um, we are able to uh, search for documents in Salesforce and kind of synthesize those uh, for context before conversations. We also draft responses based on Trevor Project guidelines. Um, also, if the conversation seems to veer in the direction of needing uh, location-specific resources, we're able to search for those and email patients without any um, kind of prompting from the counselor. Uh, we also are able to fill out Salesforce forms after the conversation and also during the conversation um, and more. Excited to talk into or speak uh, to exactly how we develop this as well. Um, but the goal of this was, again, to make sure that counselors can focus on conversations and on people rather than on paperwork. Um, just for context, this is what a general Trevor case looks like. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of fields that need to be filled. Um, and then these are all transformed into a PDF that then needs to be parsed um, if there are previous conversations with the same contacts that we want to make sure we have the context of. Um, and then next slide, please. Um, and then these are some examples of the Trevor resources. This is just a very small um, subsection of all of the Trevor resources. Usually as a counselor, I have multiple screens, a bunch of tabs open, trying to navigate between um, different resources to make sure I'm providing the best care um, possible. Um, so we're hoping that with Trevor Copilot, this becomes a lot easier for not just Trevor counselors, but any crisis counselors who have to talk to people, but also take action at the same time. Awesome, with that, we'll pass it at the room to talk a little bit about how we built this. All right, awesome, thanks Ria. So as Ria mentioned, you know, the goal here is uh, to sort of automate a lot of these laborious tasks. And uh, when we when we were designing this, you know, the key goal was, you know, the end user in mind, both the uh, counselor and uh, the contact of the patient. Uh, so the idea was that we wanted to make the process seamless. So we didn't want the counselor to sort of, you know, to prompt engineering in real time, we wanted everything to flow based on the context history, based on you know where the conversation is. 
So that's that's what this architecture uh, sort of, you know, uh, how it was created. So out here, I'm going to start at the bottom left corner. So what we do is, you know, we take into account patient or contact history. Uh, this may include their uh, location information. This may include their previous treatments and things like that. And we also take into account the chat history, right? Where is the conversation? What's going on? What was discussed about? And all of this is fed into a uh, Llama uh, React agent. And the idea is that we want this React agent to sort of, you know, in real time, take decisions uh, and then, you know, provide the right relevant tool to the counselor. Right now, what are these tools and what do they look like? So there were six key tools that we had created. So the first is information tools. So these are, you know, more around providing information uh, right to the counselor. One is PDF parsing and summary. This is based on the Llama index parse. Uh, we, we totally loved using it. And what we did was uh, we basically extracted information from Llama index parse, used chat GPT to summarize it. And like Ria mentioned, you know, uh, this was the initial forms uh, that uh, had patient or contact information. And as the chat started, this tool basically served up this information. So then the uh, then the counselor had uh, some context on the patient. Second was, you know, RAG. This was around all these documents uh, that, uh, you know, we used uh, Llama Index RAG and sort of, you know, built these reply suggestions using this. Second was action tools. Uh, these uh, these are tools that take actions, for example, web search, for example, local search for therapists, then email compose and send. This is a Python mailer uh, to send emails out. And then finally, there are two additional tools. One was escalation response. So for example, based on chat history, if if the React agent thinks that the that the context is severe, that the that the case is severe, it might it might suggest that, you know, it needs to be escalated. And finally, the form autofill, which we use at the, you know, which is triggered at the end, which actually summarizes the whole information. So based on all of these tools and the uh, the uh, the history and the uh, patient context, it actually picks which tool to use. And then it suggests that tool in the uh, co-pilot suggestions. And uh, I'll, I'll pass on uh, next to uh, uh, Divija to talk about the vector database. Yeah, in this hackathon, we have a couple of other sponsors uh, who offered us the credits to use their services, and we used uh, uh, DataStax AstraDB for the ve vector database and Bento ML. And uh, coming to Bento ML, Bento ML is uh, uh, op uh, offers open source models uh, which we can deploy in the Bento cloud and use those embeddings. And we used uh, uh, sentence transformers uh, for our uh, Trevor project, uh, uh, con uh, Consular Copilot. And um, coming to uh, DataStacks AstraDB, uh, it's a vector database and uh, it helped us to manage and retrieve the uh, Trevor project guidelines uh, documents uh, very seamless in a very seamless way. Um, uh, now let's move on to the demo. Well, cool. so um, so the demo gods were not really cooperating with us this morning. Um, so we'll also be using a recording of our demo, which I did take um actually earlier today. But um, from a UI perspective, we really wanted to, uh, I guess, nail a couple of things. Um, so Zara, yeah. could you zoom in really quick, just and end the screen? Um. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Um, yeah, so uh, from a UI perspective, we really wanted to nail a couple of things. Um, we wanted a solution to focus on the conversation first and foremost with the AI assisted features off to the side, um, because like our primary goal was to reduce that cognitive load on counselors that are potentially juggling multiple high pressure conversations at the same time. So that's why we designed the UI that way. And then um, you know, also due to the uh, potentially like high risk nature of these conversations, we also wanted to design with safety in mind. Um, so uh, since ultimately it should be, you know, humans vetting um, whether what these uh, responses, um, you know, uh, say before they go out. Um, so we gave, intentionally gave um, counselors the flexibility to use 
um, a suggested reply or not, or modify, send a modified version. Um, and uh, from a from a longer term perspective, we even think like this design would enable us to improve and fine tune our Trevor co-pilot model um, if we can integrate counselor response choices uh, as an input for uh, human feedback driven uh, reinforcement learning um, as an approach. Um, and uh, and then lastly, um, the other thing that we really wanted to nail uh, from a UI perspective was all the so um, I think we did show this earlier, um, but these uh, case forms are just um, so much work to read and populate, um, you know, in real time. So uh, this, sorry, what am I? Um, we really wanted to make sure that um, firstly, um, they're parsed, uh, you know, in an easy to digest format, which is what happens when um, when the chat first opens. Um, and we have this like kind of nice summary. Um, and then at the end, um, we uh, once like a conversation concludes, um, we try to populate the case form in this sort of structure, um, like auto-populate whatever is possible. Um, and I guess with that, um, if uh, Amanda, if you want to kind of take the take the rein there. Yeah, sounds good. So I'll go ahead and just provide some more context on the resource suggestion and the uh, finding resources and form autofill feature. So as we can see on the right-hand side, we have some recommended resources that um, we have an agent in the background using Llama Index's agent feature. Um, the prompt for reply suggestions will provide recommended resources that we saw earlier from the Trevor project guidelines. Um, we also have an AI agent running in the background to find local resources. So for Trevor text, counselors are required to provide location-based resources. So as we can see in the conversation, um, about midway through, um, the conversation basically asks, okay, can you help me look for therapists in my area? So we use an agent to find therapists based on client area using Llama Index's Google search tool and Llama Index's load and search tool. So Llama Index's Google search tool queries the Google search engine to receive a list of results and Llama Index's load and search tool loads this large amount of information. So we do a lot of um, automation based on chat context and when it makes sense to provide therapist contacts or other local resources, we prompt the AI to send an email to share the top results of resources in their area. And uh, at the very end, just to provide some more context of the form autofill feature, um, at the very end of the conversation, we, we prompt another AI agent through Llama Index to automatically populate the CRM data of patient data based on the Trevor case that we saw earlier. And with that, I'll hand it off to Sharon. Thank you, Amanda. Um, we, uh, Zara, can we go back to the slide? Yep, slide 14, perfect. Um, this being, hi everyone, my name is Sharon. Um, this being a hackathon project, there are definitely a few areas that we wanted to think about extending and doing better. Um, and the first was around guardrails. So initially when we, it is a picture shows, when we started to um, experiment with like using GPT for, for a co-pilot, you know, it's, they, uh, it's very safe, right? Um, and it, you know, it tries to tell you that like, you need to go talk to a human, which is not a bad response really. Um, however, not, not doesn't quite work for our use case. So we found that sometimes that could be like overly rigid, right? The model could be overly rigid over generation. Um, and the other set of guardrails that we were considering is if our co-pilot was good enough, potentially what we could do is then try to like guide like the human counselors, because these are all volunteers. They have different levels of experience and training and potentially some feedback could be useful for them as well. So some of the, the extension here really could be to, I think Zara mentioned it, like collect data of human chat history or as well as human feedback to provide the chat messages um, so that we can do some fine tuning or maybe an open source LLM that would be, you know, also cheaper to operate um, and less uh, finicky when it comes to the, you know, the demo gods that we suffered from today. 
and potentially that could be extended to provide feedback from volunteers. Um, on the right hand side, the second point that we were thinking about is uh, we didn't really have time to delve into like, how to optimize our rec performance. I think some of the messages in the chat kind of hinted at the same thing. Um, just to give you an overview, like our whole document set just for this hackathon was not, I would say like, I feel like it's not big enough. It was kind of in the tens, the low tens. And that was what we could kind of gather given the time that we had. But um, absolutely there would have been more resources that I think the, the typical Trevor counselor can actually access that might have been a bit sensitive for us to um to to kind of put in at, at that point. And we also didn't um start to measure like performance, like how well is our the different aspects of retrieval and generation working. So a couple of extensions in this area. Um the diagram below shows kind of the Trevor project flow of the conversation. There's different stages. And um, I'm not sure you noticed just now, but some of these cheat sheets and resources and what to do next are targeted at these stages. So it could be really helpful for a Trevor counselor to kind of get a sense of like which phase, which conversation phase you're at. And then if we divided our vector collections by those phases, then most it would be kind of more likely that we would be retrieving like the most relevant um, documents to try to augment uh, our generation of potential resources. And also we could extend to think about validation, like potentially using frameworks like Ragas or other of the state-of-the-art frameworks out there. And that's it for extension potential. I will pass it back to um, Ria. Yeah, just to just to close this out, um, it was a lot of fun to work um, on this hackathon project. Uh, we are really proud of what we built and are going to be talking to the Trevor project to potentially, um, you know, continuing to build it out and seeing um, if counselors like myself are able to use it in actual conversations. Um, but with that, I uh, would love to pass it over to you know Jerry for for questions for the team or to anyone in the chat um, if there are questions that we haven't answered yet. Great. Thanks so much for the fantastic presentation. This is a great demo. Um, I think, unfortunately, we don't have too much time for questions, just to keep it, um, just to make sure we have time for two more presentations. Um, but with that said, uh, passing it over to Raymond. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. All right. So I have no idea how I'm going to follow up on that one because that project is just so amazing and so inspiring. Um, and yeah, really excited for the opportunity to share a little bit about my project. Uh, I, it's live. I just put a link in the chat for those who are there. Uh, I, it's, it's spelled weird, but it's anything that X, Y, Z and uh, hence the, ca the camel case. So let me, um, I thought it'd be more fun for today to show in the app. I do have some slides as kind of a backup in case we need it. Um, but yeah, let me give uh, a little bit of an overview here um, in terms of like the project. So this uh, this project was in the, I think you guys called it the continuous innovation category of the hackathon. So uh, I, ha I had already uh, built a, kind of a working prototype of this idea of can you take a different approach to 3D generative AI that is using code um, and for context there's a lot of uh, people using things called neural radiance fields or nerfs um, to generate 3d models and the, the simplest way of uh, thinking about nerfs is it's really first doing a 2d image and and that might be AI generated or not but it, you might have pictures of an object from multiple angles or you might generate those with ai and then the nerfs um, uh, is is really trying to figure out like well what is that object in 3d and it's basically interpolating like 2d to 3d and trained on huge sets and i think it's cool i run a 3d printing company i'm i like that's like this idea of like getting to 3d models making ideas real is kind of what i'm excited about and i guess the pr the pain point that got me thinking about this was I, like I've tried all the nerfs. I'm friends with like the original nerf authors of the paper, all the companies doing it. I've tried everything and I like have never been able to get something I actually want in real life. <laughs> and so the insight that led to anything was, wait a minute, like AI is really good at writing code <laughs> and code can generate 3D objects. So so basically the the way that the workflow is there's a lot of things that you can change and tabs but when we prompt the ai um oops am i zoom 
thing is in the way of me seeing my own um, prompt. I have to get this. Sorry. Uh, hope I, I'm going to type this. There we go. Flange fittings. So this takes a little while to run, but basically when we prompt the AI, it, the, the AI part is really just a code gen AI. And it's trying to figure out what code it's writing, which is using this build one, two, three framework, which is a Python package that you can think of as kind of a domain specific language. Um, the, it's helpful that the AI knows Python code, but knowing, oh man, that's not a good one. All right. Demo gods are, it's supposed to know that one. All right, the demo gods are not with us. So um, you can see we still have work to do on make it smarter, but there's a number of different like, uh, so so I did this, I loaded this one before because I kind of had a, a sense that that would happen, which is like simple text that you can extrude. Um, we've coded in like some packages for doing like threaded objects. Uh, so this is like if you type in like a hex nut, it's supposed to find this one. Um, I've, I found some examples of, for Valentine's Day. You know, I had to get my wife something nice. Um, and so it knows about sort of Bezier curves and, and can kind of write the code. So what we did at the hackathon that uh, involves RAG and I guess first, before I go into the Llama Index specific part, I want to, you know, thank thank my elders in the in the Rag world, uh, namely Mayo Ocean, who I originally learned Rag from, and uh, Mayo introduced me to Jerry. Uh, so so shout out to Mayo, he's a really amazing guy. Um, but the when we went into the hackathon, uh, I had this basically ten thousand token prompt that was required to get this thing to even sort of work at all, right? And like, it's a pretty hard problem. Happy to talk through th some of the challenges of like what's what's really hard um, about getting AI to generate 3D models. But the um, the I knew that we needed RAG to make it smarter. And so what we did in the hackathon was basically change this backend where now I've got uh, like basically all of these different, uh, <laughs> except for that one, uh, all of these different examples are now in the doc store, right? And I have just a very simple, um, like working code examples as my documents. Each one of those is its own node. I'm not doing code chunking or anything like that. The retriever is just giving me the top three examples. So now there's a much lighter weight, maybe thousand token system prompt that's just reminding it that it's got to output Python code and, and it's a really good Python programmer and it's only going to use this framework. And there's some tricks, like if it doesn't save, like in my, in my backend on the server, it only outputs the object called save, you know, little things like that. And then the retriever is bringing the top three examples that are the most relevant. Um, so what's, so the, the main benefit of what we got out of the hackathon, which was actually it's interesting, like my interest in participating in the hackathon and implementing RAG and implementing Llama Index was really around making the AI smarter. The unintended consequence and what I was actually able to achieve on Saturday was uh, I lowered my costs by 5x <laughs> because now that's not, I'm not stuffing every single example I want it to see into the system prompt. So for example, like if you, if you type like a boat, you know, I'm not paying for two tokens. I'm paying for 10,000 and two tokens in my first version, right? And now with RAG, you know, it's only fetching those most relevant examples. So now each each user's prompt is more like, let's say 2,000 tokens. And, and now there's more variability depending on the, the length of the examples. So that was like our first real win was being able to uh, reduce the costs. And again, right now, this is like, it's live. You can use it for free. And we have some number of like maximum free monthly queries um, that folks can use. And then maybe to sort of shift it more into the like future direction, the what I'm really excited about now. I, so as I mentioned before, like this is a really hard problem, right? Like the AI, like the AI can't see what it's doing. It's just trying to write code that generates something in 3D. You could maybe imagine incorporating some kind of multimodal thing, but frankly, like multimodal. The models are very young and they are not good at like 
this kind of like, oh, like that curve is the wrong shape or, or this object with respect to, you know, they can like say, oh, that's a llama in your, in your picture, but they're, they're not very good at engineering kinds of things. And so what's really cool now, and, and maybe to share a little bit more about what we want to do with anything is, um, make this like, it's going to be hard and it's going to take kind of a community effort of like human written examples. So like, this was an example I wanted to play around with, like, can you do lattices? And so, you know, we generate that example. I wrote this and now this is in the training set or like one of the guys that's really involved with build one, two, three D named Jern. He like wrote this of like a light bulb. Right. So like now, again, this is a human written example, but like we can, we now have a system with Llama index, uh, and the, and the Astro DDB, uh, vector store to like, add these examples, build a pipeline for like testing them, make sure there's no broken examples in the repo. And basically as we get more users who are interested in it uh, and building it, then it gets smarter and smarter and smarter over time. Um, and so that's where I think Llama Index kind of uh, enables us to have this framework, to have this community effort. Um, and yeah, it is really hard. And like maybe one, like one question, honestly, I have for you, Jerry, like, I've been really struggling with, um, like, what's the eval framework for this, right? Like, obviously, like, I could build something that's just, like, does it render a working object? But, like, I don't even, like, how, how, how would you approach fine-tuning? Like, you can't fine-tune without eval. So, like, what's the eval when the output is something that I don't even know how to get the AI to comprehend? Yeah, I... I mean, you gotta put me on the spot. I, I don't really know, um, but I because you know this is all like first you're generating code, second it's rendering into a three D model. I'm sure right. if um, we collectively thought about it for you know like a, an hour or so, like there would be both like um, kind of ways to use human labels as well as automatic approaches to do it. Like right. I think the default is just just collect a big data set and get a bunch of humans to like label it and, yeah. and use that as training signal. Um, but I'm right. sure there's a bunch of like just um, like unsupervised like 3D object metrics that you can use as fine tuning signals too. Um, yeah. And that part I don't really know yet, but I like, for instance, I'm sure you could have heuristics like whether or not the 3D object is consistent or, or have like an AI model detect how good like this 3D yeah. object is. Yeah, like kind of like a discriminator versus like the generator type thing. Um, right. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyways, uh, just not to, not to like quiz you, but you, you've got a lot more experience with this stuff than, than I do. And I, it's really stumped me. And I agree, like short term, what I want to build is like a user base where like people are like upvoting, like, oh, this is the best one. And then some of those good ones end up in the training set. Um, and then I also, I know we're coming up on time for, for my section. So I want to be respectful of time, but I do want to just show a little bit about where I'm also going with this, the, um, which is, so one, I'd like to be able to get to like something like this, right? Like, how do you describe that? How do you prompt that? Like, well, obviously we have the code for this here, but like how, how would the AI like be able to understand like a much more complex object? Um, and then lastly, like I'm starting to play around with like uh, a image workflow approach too. So I can put some of the links for this in the chat or I've like preloaded the QR code for, for people on YouTube and we can put these in the description and stuff. But like, can we now, so this is a super simple example. If you load this, it'll load this poster like on your wall as a poster, or this will like load what looks like a llama wherever you are in your physical space. But like starting to, so like, like the end goal in mind is like help people make their ideas real. like. A natural language prompt to 3d model that like you'd want to use you can preview in AR like see it in your physical space is it the right size of the right shape but I also think I'm kind of interested in like baby steps of like okay like like images are like probably a million times easier <laughs> than 3d models let's start with images and then can we like extrude images and then so playing around with some of that stuff too but anyways, I'll pause if there's any questions or no time for questions. Just really appreciate the opportunity to, to share a little bit about anything to XYZ. And it's live uh, at, yeah, at this website for people to try.
Yeah, one one thought on the um, how do you describe this object? I think someone, I think Hamza mentioned in the comments, you could try feeding it to GPT-4V or a visual model, have it output an initial text description, and then use that as like a weak training signal. Um, so that basically at least you have some starter description for that. Yeah, we've been, I've been trying to do something like that. And there's actually a, a decent, um, there's this YouTuber named Too Tall Toby. And he creates these like CAD competitions where he shows like, here's the specs for this. Actually, this part that we're looking at came from Too Tall Toby's competitions. And so he has like a 2D image that's like, you design this in CAD. And then the build one to 3D community figured out like how to write the code for it. So there's actually like a not, you know, there's not hundreds of examples like this, but there are at least like dozens of examples where you could imagine kind of riffing on a, on a vision model where you're like, Hey, here's, here are the instructions and description that led to this 3D thing. And so that's definitely something that, um, like I've been playing around with and, and my initial experiments <laughs> failed horribly. Um, it, it won't be competing in the, uh, two tall Toby CAD tournaments anytime soon. Hey, well, thanks so much for this presentation. This is awesome. I think, I think it's a great uh, showcase of multimodal generation capabilities along with Rag. Uh, and it's definitely beyond, you know, the, the basic kind of like trap outs that people think of when they think of Rag normally. So a uh, great example of that project. And moving on to last but not least, um, uh, Home AI. Um, Jing, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just muted. <laughs> okay, sure. Right. Can I share the screen? Yep. That's great. Um, so this is our home.ai project. Um, yeah, so we are we, we want to work on this because we want to help people on their home purchasing journey because um, buying a home is probably the most exp expensive transaction in one's life, but it's um, very frustrating and very time consuming. So we are thinking to use LLM to help people in this area. Um, yeah, uh, for example, you want to start buying a home and there are quite few steps. Like you start by searching, you want to find a home that um, like um, follow your criteria. For example, you want a quiet place or you want to be wanted to be um, close to a public school or you wanted to be far away from a super fund. So those are kind of the soft criteria which you can't quite um, do in Zillow by clicking on the filter. Like they can, you can only choose the, for example, the four bedrooms or the bathrooms. So those are kind of a uh, very hard filter. And also we want to enable the soft filtering uh, with language model. Like you can talk with the model and then it helps you with the soft criteria. And the other part is um, the disclosure part. Say you find a home, which you think is very good. Then you want to read the disclosure to see whether there are some common fundamental issues, like whether the foundation is good or cracked, or if the window is good, or like how many remodels has it done, or like any other uh, problems in this um, house. Um, however, the disclosures are very long. There are like, um, there, are always, there are often more than 100 pages, and it's very hard for a normal person to do that without pain. So you will talk with your with your agent and spend hours on that. That's also an issue we want to do uh, want to resolve. Uh, we actually summarize the disclosure into a very well, a very very short one pager, so it's very easy for people to understand. So the last step is you want to make an offer, and we will show that later. Yeah, that's the part for the um, disclosure part. Like you deal with endless paperwork, and we we want to make it very concise. Um, here is a small demo. Say we start from here and you describe to the um, here with natural language, what kind of house do you want to have? For example, this one, you want it to be no termite and no legal issues. 
or there's no environment risk, for example, Superfund, or it's very uh, prone to earthquake. Say this, um, say the model returns you with a few homes. And if you click into that, you can see this disclosure summary. The first summary is about the property details. You have the address and also the property tax and all the basic information. And then the other one is for the major concerns, which are the points where you might be most concerned about in this disclosure. Is it too small? Um, yeah. For example, in this exterior, you see there is a water damage to the roof, or you can see there are electrical issues or there are plumbing issues. So if you find that in the disclosure, it takes a huge amount of time. And now you can see all of that in a glance. Um, and for uh, what, what kind of issues are classified as major concerns, we have a real estate, a real estate agent in our team. So we uh, borrowed his insights to, um, to um, use it in the prompt to find the major concerns. Yeah, technically, we use AstraDB and Llama Parser and Llama Index Framework, so um, so we can um, uh, dump the all the disclosures into the database in advance. And when we are making the query, it uh, looks up the it looks up the uh, database and uh, give us a result. So that's one disclosure. Yeah. And if you click into another home, you can see other disclosures. And this house has different issues with the previous one. Um, say you are happy with these two homes and you want to move forward and make an offer. Here is somewhere you can um, input your own information and uh, it can help to draft an offer which you can pro probably send to the uh, to the to the seller. Well, if you trust this tool enough, um, ideally, um, a real estate agent can be replaced with this tool because it covers all the steps from searching and to the investigation and to the final step of making an offer. But this is not quite um, live yet because you can see this offer is not quite professional. Like we are still working on, for example, to make the PDFs more professional to be a real offer or to... Um, make the search more um, like more detailed. Yeah. That's the market size we, that's our estimation. Uh, basically is like we have um, 200,000 real estate agents. So if we have um, like we can replace a small portion of that, then that will be a great, a great amount. Yeah, questions? Great. Could you talk a little bit more about the stack that you used in building this? Because you have a bunch of um, mm -hmm. a bunch of components. I, I'm noticing a little bit of the Crate Llama. You have like this outer page as well, where you can like uh, mm -hmm. select like different homes. You have the disclosures. Curious how you built this whole thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think the um, the tech stack is uh, based on the Llama Index framework, and we are using the RAG because um, there are not too much public information for the homes. We have to find all the information in the disclosure. So what we did is we uh, front load uh, a few disclosures into the AstraDB. Um, so it has like a knowledge, a knowledge pool of all the um, like information for the homes. And when we are doing the search, it will search, query like the different homes and find the ones that match our searching criteria. And also when we are doing the disclosure summarization, um, it queries the specific property and then um, gave us a summary from the hundreds of pages of disclosure. And then like, we send all of this as context to uh, ChatGPT, GPT-4, which is also part of the uh, Llama Index framework. And then GPT-4 gives us like the, um, like the um, like natural language response. Got it. And, and uh, what part did you use uh, Llama parse? Was this the parse of disclosures? Uh, yes, exactly. And also we notice uh, the using of Llama parse is actually quite helpful because there are lots of uh, tables or like unclear uh, parts in the disclosure. And I realized like after using Llama index, we got a higher quality of the summarization of the homes. 
Nice. That's a good finding. Mm -hmm. um, great. If there's any questions from the audience, uh, feel free to jump in as well. Um, and and yeah, in terms of like what's next, what are the biggest items? If you were to you know continue this project, uh, what would be the things that you'd be interested in in caring for? Whether it's like a research problem or like a UX uh, product UX problem. Um, actually, I think the most important part is find the um, market fit, because we, uh, the, our group is still working on that, and we talked with more real estate agents and realized um, that might be not their pinpoint, because we are trying to solve these problems, but we are not sure if they want to pay for that. So now we are interviewing with lots of real estate agents to see like what are the most painful part and what are the parts they want to pay most money on. Well, thanks for the great presentation. Um, and to all the projects, thank you so much for coming here and presenting during the webinar. Um, I think, you know, uh, I'm sure the audience as well as the YouTube audience is going to really enjoy looking at all these creative applications of RAG beyond basic chatbots. And so thanks for your time on a Thursday morning. Uh, the video will be up. And then if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. This is for the YouTube listeners. All right. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.